fix it. And in this video, we describe to you a new bad breath sensor that is handmade by us. In the age old battle against bad breath, humans have faced feelings of uncertainty, self doubt, and embarrassment. While the search for a permanent cure goes on, traditional stop gaps such as a breathman or a piece of gum have been utilized for centuries in an effort to mask oral malodors. However, how is one to know if his or her breath truly does smell bad, and what odors classify as bad breath? Research has shown that up to 90% of the compounds that cause bad breath originate in the mouth, primarily due to bacterial metabolism, and these reactions often produce sulfur compounds which the human nose recognizes as a bad odor. A few examples of high sulfur content foods are coffee, garlic, and eggs. The most prominent of these sulfurous compounds is hydrogen sulfide, H2S. This molecule is very reactive and we made use of this by harnessing its reaction with copper chloride to form copper sulfide and hydrogen chloride. We embedded the copper chloride in a de-doped polyaniline film so that the production of hydrogen chloride redoped the film, significantly increasing its conductance. Thus, in the presence of high concentrations of hydrogen sulfide, we will see a change in the resistance, effectively acting as a bad breath sensor. Based on our tests, this is a reversible process and polyaniline will eventually return to its de-doped state. To build this device, we first synthesized polyaniline using the rapid mixing technique of aniline monomer and oxidant. This gave us a deep green color, verifying that we formed the emeraldine salt form of the polymer. Next, we used vacuum filtration to purify our polymer and de-doped it in ammonium hydroxide, achieving a deep blue color characteristic of the non-conductive emeraldine base form. The electrodes were fabricated by pencil traces on office paper, thereby reducing production cost and time. We used interdigitated electrodes to increase the active surface area of the electrode and decrease the electronic path length. The copper chloride was dissolved in NMP and then mixed with undoped polyaniline using sonication. Thin films were produced by drop casting our solution on the electrodes and then dried in an oven. Testing the devices was done using a potentiostat in constant current mode. A volunteer breathed on the device and the voltage change corresponding to a change in conductance was recorded. The volunteer would either chew gum, making fresh breath, or drink coffee, making bad breath, before testing the device. Our results indicate that both good and bad breath cause an instantaneous change in conductance, but bad breath requires a significantly longer recovery time. We hypothesize that this immediate response is due to the mechanical strain induced by breathing on the device, but the recovery time difference is due to the chemical reactions occurring in bad breath samples with high H2S concentration. When looking at the normalized resistance first time graph, we can see that there is about a 20% decrease in resistance when bad breath is applied in comparison to fresh breath. Furthermore, the inset recovery time graph shows that it takes twice as long for bad breath samples to recover the baseline resistance than for fresh breath samples. Both of these results support our hypothesis that this behavior is due to chemical doping. Though the initial response is not selective, we can, however, take advantage of the difference in recovery time to functionalize a device that, with a bit more optimization, could become a useful tool in the battle against bad breath. Hair looks good. Shirt looks good. Got the wine. Better check the breath. Whew. You know what they say. You don't check it, you wreck it.